Gio Perez and welcome to Llama Talk. Well, today I have Alberto Crane here with us. Okay, he's been practicing Jiu Jitsu for a while now. He started teaching in 2000, starting in New Mexico. He actually te is teaching here since 19, uh, well, since 2009, and now he's teaching out of Burbank. He's a third degree black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. So, Hey, welcome for coming, man. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm really yeah. excited to be here. And, uh, Dude, I'm excited to have you here. I saw some <laughs> of your stuff. And it's amazing what you're doing, man. It's thank, great. Thank you. Thank you. So can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. You know, I've been, uh, I've been doing Brazilian, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu for about 20 years. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was younger, I'm, you know, I just got a thousand percent into it, moved down to Brazil, lived there for like four years. That is, a, I mean, that's commitment right there. I mean, I'm thinking to move to Brazil... To, to move, actually leave your country and yeah. go to Brazil. I mean, what what got into you to say, you know what, L let me move to Brazil? You know, a buddy of mine moved down there first, and uh, he came back, and he was teaching me all this crazy stuff, and I was like, I have to do the same thing. Yeah. And then I did a couple tournaments, and I was like, I, it just, I just, it got, I got the bug, mm -hmm. and I went down there for six months, and I was like, I have to go down. I have to go down there for longer. I just have. To, I just wanted to be my best, and I knew to be my best, I had to move down there with the best at the time. Got it. And uh, how? What was the language barrier like? You know, I, I, my mom's a, lang a Spanish teacher, uh, but I spoke a little bit. I spoke a little bit of Spanish, but uh, it was tough at the beginning. It, you know, it took me about, probably about a year before I was I was able to communicate and talk and and speak the language. Yeah. Uh, but I taught myself because I was so obsessed with jujitsu. Right. How to how to read and, and write, you know, uh, by learning the by by reading the jujitsu magazines because I was trying to figure out what it said. Um, so I would I would you know. And they probably saw you and say, "Man, there's a th here's another guy trying to take away what we know." So what what was that feeling like when when they actually say, "You know what? You're actually going like a humble guy in there, actually just learning the art, right?" Yeah. Yeah, in the 90s, it was, it was a little bit different. Uh, everybody was really cool. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, like, yeah. It's, it's Brazil. You know, yeah, everybody loves Brazil. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, but uh, there's definitely something there like, oh, he's going to use, he's going to learn, you know, our, our art and, and use it against us, you know. Yeah. Uh, there's definitely a little bit of that there then, you know, more than there is now. Now it's, it's right. you know, there's YouTube, there's, there's you know, there's, there's nowhere to hide, you know. But back then there were secrets and, you know, it was, it was kind of old school. So who, who did you get to train that you would say, you know, what, are these... Uh, high caliber Jiu Jitsu uh, practitioners. You know, I'm a part of the Gracie Baja Association, mm -hmm. and at the time, like in the '90s, Gracie Baja. I mean, still, still today, of course, you know. But uh, Gracie Baja was like the powerhouse. You know, they had like the best guys, the best black belts. Mm -hmm. It was like the who's who was was in that group. Right. And so when I first went down to Brazil for the first six months, that's where I trained, and uh, I mean, it was just like. You know, it was just it was crazy, and so Good. I uh, I knew that like that's where I had to be. Can you tell us a little bit about the history of Jiu Jitsu? Sure. Um, so Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, uh, the origin, the you know the origins are from Carlos Gracie Sr. He was mm -hmm. the first one to learn the art, and right. you know, and his youngest brother Helio Gracie. So they're the two that are, you know, given credit to you know basically founding Helio and Carlos. Carlos Gracie Sr. Right. Yeah. And so Jigar Kano, the guy who started judo, his dream was to make an Olympic sport. So he had to send his disciples all over the world. You know? Awesome. And how they, he started judo is he studied jiu-jitsu. And so a lot of his old students, like yeah. they, they studied jiu-jitsu, but he changed it and made it, you know, took away all the stuff that you can practice realistically, like eye gouging and not realistically, but you, you know, you'd kill the other guy. Because it came from the samurai times. Exactly. So exactly. samurais just kill pretty yeah. much. <laughs> And so he made modifications to, you know, jiu-jitsu and called it judo. Awesome. And his students beat all of the jiu-jitsu guys. And so, okay. and it grew, of course, you know, because, you know, everybody loves, like, stuff yeah. works, right? Right. And so he sent one of his disciples to Brazil. And he taught Carlos Gracie Sr., you know, the art. And he told him, you know, he, you know, he was the judo guy going right. to Brazil. But he told Carlos Gracie Sr., this is jiu-jitsu. Don't forget it, and so he called it jujitsu, and that's so how there's a, there, there was, was an born. Under, there was an underline. There's a difference. 
So awesome, man. Yeah, and so in, in you know in Japan, like judo took over jujitsu, right? Right. You know, like jujitsu turned into judo. So, you know, I think I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say for every everything, but you know, Japanese jujitsu turned into judo, and in Brazil, the Brazilian jujitsu kept the essence of the original, you know, like the original judo, and before it would turn into the like the Olympic right. sport. Yeah, that's awesome that it fell into great hands. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's the thing. And, and they, they fought with it and eventually started the ultimate fighting championship. Right. You know, they kept the essence of it alive, you know, even just in the grappling portion of it, you know. Okay. Um, so the other question I had is that a lot of people might ask is what is the difference between uh, Japanese Jiu Jitsu versus uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu? Right. I mean, you kind of explain it a little bit right yeah. now, but can you expl explain a little bit more? You know, like, like I said, like Japanese Jiu Jitsu turned into Judo, right. um, you know, it, you know, turn into judo, and so Japanese jiu-jitsu, like, it doesn't really exist in, in a way, you know, like, right. it was back in the samurai days, and they weren't allowed to practice jiu-jitsu, and so they did, like, katas, and it turned into judo, and, and so and, it, it pretty much became a more practical uh, way of training, uh, you know, the jiu-jitsu, you know, it's got not, you know, in a way of sparring, the I judo, yeah, the more. judo, exactly, so, you know, it took away all the stuff that you, you couldn't, you know, do with your friend, like right. eye gouge him, or you know, you know, oh, awesome, you know, and and made it so they could we could train like okay. realistically, and you know when you when you train like that, it gives you you know gives you skills. Awesome, and uh, that's that's the the biggest you know change that he made to to turn jujitsu into the judo, Japanese jujitsu yeah. into judo as contribution. Mm -hmm. Okay, awesome. Okay, so another question is, when a new student walks into your school. What 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 do they expect? How, how's the training? I mean, what is the what is the first feel of the first class? I mean, what 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 do you want from them, or what do they want from you? Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, everybody's everybody's different. Everybody has different goals going, you know, into the school. You know, some people they want to get in better shape. They just have been a UFC fight fan for twenty years, and they just want to learn. Um, maybe they were in a traumatic situation and they have some work to do like you know for themselves and and people have different re you know different different reasons they've been bullied you know mm -hmm. everybody has their own reason you know uh, some people just think it's really cool and they they've always wanted to do it you know right um so so i try to find out what their reason is for coming into our school right you know and then i try to you know have a place that pretty much can provide you know pretty much what anybody would want to right. you know to learn at our school Got it. and and i try to have it in a you know a really good environment so so one people feel safe like safety is number one because you don't only do uh, jujitsu so you do also kickboxing you do you have different sections right right you know my school is called gracie baja burbank that's yeah. my jujitsu association that those are my roots you know Got and it. i I, uh, I plan on staying with them forever you know mm -hmm. um but uh, we are, we don't just do Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. We do you know Muay Thai kickboxing. We do fitness programs. Of course, we do kids. Right. Um, you know, we do like women's only boot camps. Uh, mm -hmm. We have a lot of different programs. And how many students do you have right now? We have about three hundred and fifty students. Wow, that's you know? awesome! Yeah, it's, it's rotating throughout yeah, the yeah. week. We have a really awesome. good, uh, really really good culture in our school, and uh, you know we have some tough guys, and we train train hard, but. Uh, it's a really good environment for everybody to thrive and to learn and to get better. Yeah, that's a, definitely a place to check out, you guys. Uh, the other thing is, I don't know, I'm a novice when it comes to jiu-jitsu. Is there a belt system and, and how are people uh, promoted? Sure. So people are promoted you know, you know, by, by belts in Brazilian jiu-jitsu. And for the adults, it's uh, white is first, obviously, blue yeah. second, purple uh, third, Brown fourth and black fifth. Okay. And then once you get your black, like when you become an old man, so you four, can... four, four color belts. Uh, actually, right. I think it's, it's five. Right. White, blue, purple, brown, black. Five. Okay. So white. So okay. Yeah. Okay. Five. And then after black, there's some you know higher belts like uh, black and red, and you know you get red. When you get your red belt, and you're an older older guy. All right. You've been, so you know, to 20 years you've been practicing, you're a third degree. I'm a third degree. Next year, I'll get my fourth degree because I'll oh, be awesome. a black belt. I'll be officially in the black belt for 14 years. Great. Okay, yeah. awesome. The other thing, you know what? I saw some videos where you're fighting in the cage. Uh -huh. Can you tell us, um, your, in your experience, how has jiu-jitsu helped you in, in cage fighting? 
You know, for one, I would have never have fought in the cage if it wasn't for jujitsu. I mean, I would have never thunk of, you know, thought about doing, you know, fighting in the cage. Uh, yeah. But I got my black belt and I was like, hey, I want to try this out. I want to see if this works. <laughs> and so King of the Cage, which is a really big deal back in back in when I first did my first fight. Where was your first fight here or Brazil? It was actually in New Mexico. New Mexico. Because okay. that's where I started, you know, teaching. And, uh -huh. and so they came to New Mexico. And I was like, I want to try this out. I okay. want to see if I want to see if this uh, jiu-jitsu stuff works in a fight right. for me, you know. Right. And so I did one fight, and uh, I sold a crap load of tickets, and they wanted me to do it again because I did that, and uh, I didn't want to because they didn't pay anything at the time. Right. It's it was yeah. a few hundred bucks, you know. But uh, that that committee is making the money. That promotion. Company yeah, probably. yeah. It just it was a different time, okay. you know. Okay. Yeah, but they said, hey, we'll give you a title fight if you fight for us again. So I was like, okay, sounds good. Okay. And uh, that's how it began for me. Okay, awesome. And uh, 20, I, did, you know, I had a 20-20 had a fight uh, pro career. So, oh, awesome, yeah. man. That's, that's Got to fight in the UFC and all over the world, so I'm blessed. That's great. Yeah. You know, you guys have to go check that out. I haven't been able to see it, but uh, you know, <laughs> now he's telling me I got to go look for you, man. 